Hey guys, this is Angel Vivaldi, and you're tuning in to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience. The Metal Teddy Bear Experience has begun. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. We got my boy, Jesse. What's up, dude? What's up? How's it going, guys? And this episode, we have a special guest. We have Angel Vivaldi, the Ooh, uh, famous on, guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> How's everyone doing? <laughs> Pretty good right now. I can't complain. Chugged coffee, uh, fixed a toilet again, and uh, ready to do this. <laughs> well, you, I'm glad you got that shit over with. This is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended, right? <laughs> Oh my god. So how's it yeah, going? Yeah, that's how we're breaking this seal right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sit back and get comfortable because this we're we're gonna break some sweats. It's all good. That's what we like to see, you know, Love to it. do on this podcast, honestly. <laughs> so uh, Angel, what have you been doing like during uh quarantine? You've been able to like write a lot or have you been like just kind of working on yourself or what's been going oh, on? Well, let me start this off. Do I have to be PG over here or can no. I lose? Because I'm a, I'm the son of a marine. So, there <laughs> yeah, um, so to answer your question, whatever the fuck I want, no, I'm kidding. Um, I'm, not kidding. I'm not kidding. Um, but as honestly, my life hasn't changed too much aside from not being able to go to the gym. So, another day in the life of man, <laughs> so you're just lifting guitars as your weights, you know, just doing that the whole time, yeah, and all of my emotional baggage, too. <laughs> yeah, Damn. It's, been, it's keeping me busy. That's awesome. Yeah, because I heard you, you know, I didn't know you were doing it until like that post. I forgot what it was a couple, maybe like a month, a month and a half ago, about like you uh, talking about bodybuilding. I didn't know you were training to compete as a bodybuilder, correct? Or no? Or is that just for lifestyle? No, that was, that was, that was correct. Um, you know, the thing is, is I think um, there's certain, I, I'm private with a good amount of things, you know. Um, music is the biggest part of my life, but by no stretch of the imagination, that's the only thing that I do. Um, so what happened, well, the bodybuilding thing was very unexpected for me, but it started with doing a shoot for DiMarzio, which was always a dream of mine. It's like, you know, following Larry's career and Tony Sartino, who's this like principal stylist for years. I mean, this guy does, you know, Bon Jovi, everyone. So me being super into fashion and that whole world, like I've been enamored with his work. So when it came time to, um, you know, for me to do my DiMarzio shoot after being like with them for like almost like a decade now, they, uh, you know, I really wanted, I wanted it to be like one of the best shoots Larry ever did. So I went to the gym, I put a lot of work into it, and then it just spiraled beautifully out of control. And here I am fucking training. <laughs> but I'm building competitions. It's like ridiculous. I mean, that, that was the goal. Obviously, um, I was started, I started my prep right after Nam. So that was in early February. And that was for a show that was supposed to be my birthday, funny enough, June 13th. And obviously, Corona put the yeah. end to that. So <laughs> maybe we'll try for next year. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah, because obviously you can't do a lot of like your work. Like you only have so you probably have a few weights at home, but you probably don't have the proper gear to train at that level, right? No, nah, the thing is, is yeah, um, I really need my coach. I'm habituated to my coach, and and um, I I need an angry person yelling at me. Like I respond very well <laughs> to that kind of. Uh, yeah, I respond very very well to that kind of a discipline. I mean, again, being the son of a marine. Yeah. Like, I was just uh, going to say that. I'm like, that. Yeah. well, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and um, it really gave me a lot of, um, it gave me a lot of confidence to, um, because I'm, I'm a confident person. I mean, pff, look at my socials. I don't have any confidence <laughs> issues. But in some regard, I really didn't, you know. And when it comes to, um, you know, uh, I guess uh, when you talk about being an agreeable person or not agreeable person, I was very much you know, I'm, I'm just inherently an agreeable person. And unfortunately, in the music business that we're in, um, you can't be that way all the time because then yeah. people see your kindness as weakness and they take advantage of you, which has happened many, 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 many times. So when I went to the gym, put the end to that shit. Come at me. <laughs> Fuck me. Find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was, like a, it was a lot of benefits to that. Yeah, people when they say they like squat heavy or bench heavy for like the first time, they're like, "Yeah, I kind of just don't give a fuck anymore." Just like, "Yeah, you know." Not that I'm like looking for fights, but it's like, "Eh, no, it's all right, man. I'll talk to you later." <laughs> yeah, you know, that's actually a better way to put it, more healthy way to put it, is that you just care less, you know? Because yeah. especially, I think it's not just with that. I feel like anything in life that you that you feel like you've conquered, 
it, it adds something to your temperament, your personality, your inherent experiences. And, and ultimately, that that's really what relation is, especially in the political climate that we're in today. You know, everyone has their views based on their experiences in life. It's, that's how it is. You know, it's a matter of just practicing tolerance. And if you have an open mind to learning whatever it is that their experience brought them to, whether it's my coach with his training, you know, taking lessons with a guitarist or, you know, learning how to sew, whatever it is, you know, it, it's, um, it adds value to your own perception of who you are. Oh yeah. Like I, I, I never trained at a very high level, but I trained a little bit of jujitsu and I will say after like those hard training sessions, like mm-hmm. I could give a shit about the little things. <laughs> right. Usually like, I'm worried about everything. Smells. I'm like, Oh man, I gotta get my oil changed. Ugh, I gotta eat later, dude. What am I going to eat? It's like, after that, I'm like, Dude, I don't care, man. I can go to sleep. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like <man>. I'm done. <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah. Oh, I was to the grocery store with your gi on. <laughs> oh well, that was yeah. I, oh my god, yeah, it you know, so bad. I didn't know those things retained <laughs> smell. I thought you just washed them. Apparently, the 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 material absorbs the odor. So even if you wash them, if they get sweat on them, it just like goes back to whatever it smelled like before you washed it. I was like. Oh no. And I like everyone in the grocery store was avoiding me. I was like, Oh no, is that me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, I, that sounds like I mean, that to many people can be a problem, but that's also a solution for many issues. Too, so. Oh yeah. Clear, clear <laughs> the way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now, if you want no one down next to you in the aisle, that's how you get it. Yeah, social distancing. He's the smelly Jesus <laughs> on his way to get cat food. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> I uh, will say, uh, well, sorry. I always wondered though, cause I'm not a guitarist. Yeah, yeah. getting like in shape i'm assuming would help you but also like as a bodybuilder you're trying to get decently big and also sculpt your body has that had any negative effect on your guitar playing but only positive or only positive um the funny thing is it, it had i not had my coach it would have probably had some type of hindrance um because it's really it's just like guitar playing it's like proper technique man you know you really have to fossil on uh focus on engaging the muscles that you're really targeting um, the only injury I sustained was through my own ignorance, really, and lack of experience. And that was actually shortly before my last tour, which was in December 2018. I was, um, I, I, I'm very, I'm a nat, I, I'm a natty, you know, um, I take very good care of myself as far as like, I don't, my diet's like razor sharp. And, um, but I, one day I took a pre-workout that wasn't like a, like super green and clean and organic and shit like that. And yo, I was like doing backflips in that gym and I went to pull more weight than I, <laughs> um, I normally do. And I was ignorant. So I was like that brute mentality just just fucking do it. And I did it. And I got tendonitis in my hands, but oh. that was way before I sort of like training seriously. Um, but that was li- literally it. Like I haven't had any, any issues at all. Thank God. Oh, that's awesome. Now, yeah. I'm very lucky, man. Oh, yeah, because I was always wondering that because I know, like, uh, just sometimes, like, if you just get too big, whether it attacks, like, your, like, dexterity or just, like you said, like, you just bro out and all of a sudden mm-hmm. you can't walk the next day. It's like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, that, that's how that's oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But from, from a good standpoint, not necessarily, like, an injury standpoint, because you're just, like, so engorged with weight, you can't, like, scratch the back of your head. <laughs> you know, like, I've, I've had those, uh, I've had had quite a number of those <laughs> well, how often how often do you like uh spend time practicing now that you're always home um well i mean i'm i i'm always home to begin with um i'm quite a homebody anyway um the only place i really went to pre-corona was literally the gym <laughs> like groceries get delivered like literally nothing really has changed um i and as far as practicing um you know i feel like once Whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're a guitarist or whatever it is, once you feel like you found your voice, it's, it's more a matter of refining it, right? So yeah. for me, um, I practice through challenging myself by playing and writing material that's unnatural. Um, not well, I wouldn't say unnatural. That's a bad word. Um, challenge, just challenging, you know? Um, so for me and the record that I'm working on now, I'm actually working on two records. One of them being in a traditional band with vocals, which is like a whole new venture that not many people know of. I haven't really made it too public, um, aside from like my Patreon, but um, so it's like an EP with the band with vocals that I'm working on. And that's just awesome. like, I know my role in that band, man. You know, I'm a songwriter and there's not a lot of guitar solo. It's not fucking nuts. You know, it's, it's, it's just pretty straightforward stuff. However, for Away With Words Part 2, which is the next um, solo record that I'm going to be doing, it's, um, there's no metal on it, there's no rock, there's no seven string, it's all six string, it's all uh, 
you know, um, pretty much the music that I grew up with, which is a lot of like uh, Latin jazz, funk, um, you know, That's fusions awesome. kind of stuff. A lot of acoustic, it's like really, really acoustic based. Um, and that's that's proven to be a really interesting uh, journey throughout this whole thing because um, that's like the, the one thing that's really, uh, I guess, taking up a majority of my time, really. But um, but aside from that, it's just kind of like playing and writing when I'm in the mood to, you know? And because um, I don't like to sit down, if I'm not in the mood to write, if I'm not inspired, I don't force it, man. I don't force it, you know? So, yeah, you know, it's just been spending time just writing, practicing through writing. Dude, that's awesome. Well, also, you said for Synapse, you, like, didn't you, like, change? I don't know if you're in a different house now, but didn't you, like, decorate rooms according to, like, the feeling for each song, basically? Yeah. And you write to those rooms to, it's like, is this the same house? And do you still use, like, tactics like that to write? Oh, uh, what a beautiful hell that was. Um, <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm in a new house now. Um, thank God, because I think that room is giving me PTSD. <laughs> um i kid but i'm not i'm, I'm, I'm low-key serious oh <laughs> uh, wow. there was a uh, yeah so um i guess expanding on my interests like interior design if i wasn't an artist if i wasn't um you know doing cinematography i, I would definitely be an interior designer hands down so for me um i just noticed like you know whenever i moved from one place to another or you know, whatever my surroundings were different. I get inspired, man. You know, and I feel like it's funny when I told when I told everyone the concept. Like a lot of fans really responded. They're like, "Yeah, man. The first thing I do is I set up a studio, I move apartments or something like that, and I just write because it's a new environment. And you get inspired." Um, but uh, but yeah, man. So like, I, I took a passion that I loved, and I had such a great time painting. You know, I signed a a color to each song, and I painted the studio. You know, red and wrote adrenaline, painted it black, and you know, wrote dopamine, green and serotonin and stuff. But it was so much more than that. It became, it spiraled beautifully out of control, much like the body of me. It was um, like serotonin is like the confidence molecule. So I would only write that early in the morning or during the day. Dopamine I'd write at night. Adrenaline I'd write after, you know, having a really good workout. Like I did all sorts of weird things to really put myself in, in the mental space of what these neurotransmitters do, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was... Uh, very long process because i also filmed it and i meant to put this documentary up but i'm also like a fucking one man, one man army here I can't, <laughs> what the hell i have like three terabytes of footage and i'm like you know and obviously i was the only one there shooting everything so i remember the moments so i can't hand that to someone else i'm like fuck that i did it you know i was like i remember i was there so like, i have to i have to do it but i haven't touched the footage um the main reason was because I had so much foot, footage of uh, Ollie Herbert when he was around yeah. and he was a really close buddy of mine and it was just really, it was pretty painful to see him with me in a room writing and this, it was just too much. And um, I put it to the sideline and I made peace with his death, you know, um, probably like about a year after, like fully. So I could see the footage now. I just like, I, I'll, I'll tear up a little bit, but it's like, I smile, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. all the so we probably had a beautiful weekend. But um, now it's just a matter of um, part laziness and part being overwhelmed with new material. Because I don't feel like, I feel like the most, the thing that people want the most right now is new music. Like, they don't give a fuck about a documentary, so I'd rather give them that. And then, you know, when the mood strikes me, I'll go and edit some of that stuff. Yeah. Did well, you start awesome. editing any of it or you just uh, didn't touch it at all? You just have it recorded? You know, this is what I did um, to make peace. You know, I, I put half ass effort into it. Well, not really half ass. <laughs> well, yeah, half ass effort. Let's be honest. So what I did was um, I dumped all the footage. I have all the sessions there and I, I have markers in them. But the thing I have to do is I have to film commentary because what I did is I kept the journal throughout the entire thing. So I can actually go back and just like read, I, I do, like I read it now and I'm like, God, I remember everything. I remember what fucking candle I had lit when I was writing that song and when I smell it now, I'm like, wow. you know, like little things that trigger you, you know? And, and um, because I, I had a feeling, cause it was like, you have to understand, like, you know, here's one person painting a room. It was like 28 coats of paint total. All right. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> and Damn, it wasn't man. just that it was like, you know, um, you know, doing all these different things and then finding artistic shots like hanging ivy on the wall and having the camera on a track that's lit perfectly that goes through the ivy where i'm in focus it's like crazy really in-depth shit and 
I was doing all this at once. So as I'm trying to write, you know, oh, the camera's, okay, oh, this camera is dead. <laughs> or, you know, so it's like, imagine being interrupted in the middle of having sex. That's literally what it was like. It was literally what it was like. You're, I was like, mother fuck. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know? And then you go into your thing and you come back and you get three pumps in, then you finish. And then you, it's, again, it's like a slew of apologies. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but like, um, it's the best but analogy yeah, out on the show. Well, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was it was it was quite a bit. But man, some of the shots were fucking gorgeous, and like I really captured a lot of moments. But it was really overwhelming, man. It's like sometimes I forgot to put the mic on, so there's no audio, and it's just, dude, it was just so much, man, so much shit. It's it's not a lot. It's just a lot for one person, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, damn. I I would be overwhelmed probably the first yeah. song into the album, let alone decorating my house, painting multiple <laughs> coats, and becoming a director at the yeah. same time. <laughs> yeah, halfway through, I remember getting to uh, the song called Adrenaline, which was the hardest, the song I struggled with the most. And um, when I painted, I was really careful with the colors that I chose because I wanted it to look good. And yeah. the, um, I, I felt myself getting mentally and emotionally fatigued while I was doing that because like the red color, like I got kind of lazy with the painting and the problem with like color saturation is like, so when you do a black wall, you can't just paint it black. You have to do a gray primer, then it's black. Yeah. Pink primer, then it's red. That's why there's 28 coats of paint. Now the reason why there were so many was well, like maybe like 25 or something like that. Um, I had to do the red wall twice because the first coat that I did um, on camera, it looked fucking dreadful because I, you, when you paint, you have to do it properly. You have to do an X pattern. You have to be, you know, and I love painting, but like I got tired. And when I was writing and I was filming and I looked back at the footage a couple weeks later and I was like, my heart fell into my asshole. So I was like, I can't use any of this footage. Oh my it God. It was fucking God awful. And it was, you know, and I was like, all right, well, I'll, maybe I'll do a different angle. But then I didn't feel it was authentic. So then I went back. And I painted the wall again. And then when I went back to write the song, like there was this one section that I just like struggled so much, man. Like I, like there was a point, there's a couple of points. Like I just got frustrated beyond like anything I've ever experienced, like to the point of fucking tears, man. Like I was like, oh, fuck, man. But the other thing was like the red, it gave me anxiety. Cause like this is like this big red wall kind of staring at like, cause it's in my peripherals. Like this is how I have my desk set up and it's this wall that I'm looking at. So like in my peripherals, I'm just surrounded by this thing that's frustrating me and it's fucking red, you know? And it's like, <laughs> yo! Jeez. And, your face. Um, and yeah, man, it, it's like after, it, it's fine for a while, but then at, after a certain point, it just, it just becomes unhealthy to be honest, you know? So it was like, but it was compounded by the amount of work that I was doing on top of trying to write this record that was very conceptual and profound. So it was a lot of fucking work. I'm just so glad it's over. At least you could check it off, right? <laughs> check it off on your list. Like I've, I done, I did this. <laughs> yeah, man. I never forget the moment where I was like the, the final moment. I'll never forget it, man. It's just, it's like, fuck. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Well, going back to that, uh, you said on your, on your Patreon, you're writing like an EP, like a full band kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, uh, is there any like no members in that? Is it just like musicians that you're just friends with or you can't yeah, speak both, about it? <laughs> both. Uh, yeah, so there's um, there's three of us. Uh, I won't say who yet, but um, the drummer. So this project started in 2014, funny enough. It started in wow. 2014. I got a message on, on, I'll never forget that moment either. I was um, going, I was taking shit and I was going through all my messages because that's when <laughs> we go, that's whenever a fan gets a message from an artist, we're taking the shit. That's why I'm on like two hours. Cause I'm just sitting there. It's like, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You. Oh my God. <laughs> You're awesome. the reason I do this. You're the reason. Yeah. That. Where's the toilet paper? I yeah. Cause you want to come <laughs> off very sincere. You don't want to be full of hot air. So you have to get rid of all this. Then you <laughs> keep in the place of love. You know? Get rid of all the ego. <laughs> yes. <laughs> get rid of all the bullshit, man. That's so, um, so I responded to this fan. He was like, Hey man, I listened to you on Pandora and you know, I'm a huge fan. Da -da -da. I just respond to him like you, I would anyone. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. He's like, uh, and I said something. He's like, yeah, man, I'm in a band too. Da, 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 da. And, I, and then he named the band. And I was just like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was a band I, I grew up listening to, man. I mean, like, it, it, it was, it was, it was, they were a very important band in my life. And um, 
I was like, holy shit. And, and he responded and said, hey, man, if you ever want to do cards together, let me know. And I was just like, oh, wait. Angel, you went black. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it's, this, <laughs> it's this goddamn, is that a racist joke, man? I'm a little brown, you know? <laughs> <laughs> God forbid, you know? Yeah. All right, now it's um, my show, Chris. You can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <You're done>. <laughs> <laughs> so, Angel, what were you thinking? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wasn't. That's the end. <laughs> um, but no. So long story short, um, or long story long, he, you know, asked me if, if I would do anything. And I, I do. I wiped my ass. I got up and I went to my studio and right, started writing. Good. So I was like, yes. I don't care what. I, and at the time, I had a day job too, so it was like spread pretty thin. And, and I was doing Way with Words Part One at that point. So keep in mind, like Part yes. One came out in 2014. I'm working on Part Two to come out in 2021. Like that's the amount of growth that I needed. Mm do this but i digress so we started writing songs and we started auditioning singers and that was a long long process man because vocals are fucking everything in the band and um we were going to go with the female singer we actually talking to elise rig from amaranth um, she expressed some interest in it oh, and nice. um and and yeah so ultimately we 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 got our guy he's he's fucking incredible he's a really good friend of mine and um and yeah so uh, i guess the, the the only notable musician in the group aside from myself is the drummer um but yeah, man, the songs are exquisite. They're beautiful. They're so well thought out. And um, I'm just really, I'm really, I'm getting drum stems as we speak. So I'm just, I'm, I cannot wait to go in and like retrack everything and refine everything and ah, put it out. That's, that's really awesome. exciting. Is it like really like metal based, kind of like what you've been doing or is it more rock oriented? It's uh, kind of, I would say hard rock with like a little bit of a metal edge here and there, but it's very, it's just like pretty much just like straight hard rock kind of stuff. Okay. that's sick because also like like one of the reasons why i always liked your music is like you know i like like guitars that shred and stuff but like what yeah. makes you separate from all those guys to me at least is that you write hooks for like instrumental music like you just like got these hooky like serotonin's the one that i always think about like that like that main riff that when it kicks in i'm just like damn yeah. have you had a problem has that helped you writing with a vocalist or is it hard to have to turn that down a little bit to give the vocals a little bit more space to shine no, you have know, you found that? That's a great question. It's it's I've never had that issue because when even when I'm writing my own stuff, I'm always leaving space for myself because I'm the singer essentially. Yeah. You know? So um, when I if you were to take like so on actually on Bandcamp, like I have instrumental versions of all my songs, so, like people can jam to and stuff. Awesome. Um, if you just listen to those songs, dude, like putting vocals on them is like the easiest. It's like easier than me, and I'm easy as shit. So. <laughs> It just has a specific format where it leaves it leaves that space, you know. It's just yeah. a matter of how it's filled. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, because that's again, that's always like like, yeah. When a hook hits, whether it be a drum hook, a vocal hook, or a guitar hook, you just know you're like, damn. <laughs> like, Absolutely. I feel like people who aren't musicians are like just listen to music casually, like they just don't know why. And I've always like just been kind of going over that over quarantine. I'm just like, dude, why do I like this so much? And I'm just like hearing that. It's going to be awesome to hear like your stuff with me, like, you know, vocals over. I'm very curious to see how it is. Yeah. The way that I, that, you know, um, the way that I explain collaboration in any sense, right. So like for me, like I'm obviously a solo artist, but I've had the same drummer, same bass, same guitarist for 12 years, 14, Damn. 13, years, which is Full ridiculous. Time. Like yeah. bands can't even hold on to members, let alone a fucking yeah, I was gonna say. you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, the way that I describe it is even with friendships, relationships, anything, it's like my my yellow and your blue have to make a really nice green. And the less people involved in certain situations, depending on the temperament of, of certain musicians or not, it's, it's maybe better, maybe worse, depending on what the strengths are. But, you know, the chemistry between all three of us, man, like it's just, it's seamless. It is absolutely oh, seamless and awesome. it's so rare because dude, I am very, very strong in my vision very very strong in my vision um but there's a there's a sense of trust you know um so it's 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 a very it's it's a beautiful nucleus to kind of start something creative and um you know we've been working on the songs probably on and off for like you know the past two years i mean like we once we established our singer and um they've just they're just really refined like a very just like a very nice robust wine man it's just absolutely i'm just so proud of it. do you think awesome. like being with other members kind of like helped you with that because i know some people when they write solo stuff they can get in their own head and sometimes like a song will last like i don't know like a year or something like that they'll just drag it out because they keep like changing it tweaking it doing something to it with it when you're with other band members they're like no nah, that's good you gotta stop 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the funny thing is for me in the band, um, so I write, I'm, I'm writing like, you know, all the music essentially. Um, but it's, it just comes out so much easier because dude, the hardest thing, like you're gonna say like, all right, so guitar instrumental music is hard as fucking tits to write, dude. It is hard. It's really easy to just, you know, plug in and rip it, you know, but if you want to put thought into something, it takes forever, man, because you know, the guitar is literally the voice, you know, and you have to figure out, first of all, the hardest thing I think is figuring out what it is that you want to say. And a lot of guitarists just don't know what it is that they actually want to say. And so they just go and just, you know, and, <laughs> and that's fine, dude. Like, I don't have anything against it. I think that everything has their place. But I, I think ultimately, when you have what you want to say in place, it's a lot easier to phrase around it. Yeah. But with this, like the chemistry is so good and they trust me and I trust them and are, and we're compatible. That's the thing. We're compatible. So like, it's, it's very easy, really easy. That's good to hear. I can't wait to hear it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, nice. yeah. I'm thinking 2021 will probably see two releases from me. That being one of the releases then we'll forward to part two. Oh, dude, that's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. <laughs> Put Same, me to man. 2021. <laughs> yeah. Cause I ain't releasing a goddamn thing this year. Fuck yeah. that. There's bad juju all over the place. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We wait. <laughs> and this is something you have to get on like Patreon or something like that? Oh, no, no. Like this will be out. Like once it's released, it'll be like everywhere. They get like first steps though or something like that? Oh, clips and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll post probably on Patreon once we have like some masters back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Well, I, one thing I want to know, because I remember, I think, uh, you did a clinic up at Bumondu Guitars. Yeah. You remember that? I yeah. watched it. Uh, sadly, I, I didn't know about it. So I was, they recorded them. I was able to watch it. I remember you mentioned something about, uh, you know, why you went solo. You just like, like you kind of said at the beginning of the podcast, you know, you were like, you didn't really like the energy some people bring. Like it just, right. the business itself is kind of poisonous. But are you kind of happy now that this quarantine kind of happened that like what would have happened if you were still just a part, like you were in a band or you were just a part of the music industry now that you're kind of solo? Have you thought of like how much that benefited you here? Or you were like kind of happy now looking back even more. You're like, wow, this kind of really benefited me that literally I'm a one man army because like now I don't need literally anyone in this time. I can't talk to anyone or be near anyone. I mean, honestly, I mean, like, I've been a solo artist for now 17 years, so I've been oh, a damn, woman artist for 17 years now, Jesus so I'm, I'm super conditioned to it, you know? Yeah. Um, and luckily, throughout my career, I've worn many hats, and I've bedazzled those fucking hats quite a bit, so I'm pretty good at a couple <laughs> things, you know? And, and luckily for me, you know, it, it's benefited me in the sense that it saves me a lot of money, yeah. and I don't have to depend on so many people to do things i'm not a fucking superhero don't get me wrong i depend on people to do certain things for me that are way out of my ability i'm not saying i can do everything but there's a lot of things where i i can speak I, I, all right i want this lens here i want this lit at 2700 you know what i'm saying like i can be very specific with certain things like that and it helps them at the end of the day because it makes their job easier you know it's like <laughs> having an artist that doesn't know what the fuck they want or like have a vision of certain things like like because i also do so Two years ago, I started doing music business consultations for artists. So, like, this is a situation where, like, you know, like, some people offer guitar lessons and stuff like that. I was there, I was like, man, I, you can just go on YouTube and find anything, you know? I mean, but the one thing I wish I had, man, I just wish I had, like, I wish I can pay someone who's doing music as a living to just 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 get advice and insight. It's like, how much do you make? What do you do? What? How much does this cost? Like, who do you have to talk to you to do this do this like what is the in like the behind the scenes insight so that's something i've been providing for artists for the past two years and it's been pretty fucking awesome because the more consultations i do for artists the better i get at the music business for myself and other artists that i'm going to help in the future so um and plus it's great money so like all that money i have coming in like i'm just like kind of like putting it to the side for this record because my ideas are very expensive so it's, it's kind of like a win-win you know i feel like it, it's like you're like the mentor that you always wanted when you were growing up like that's literally been my objective so um that's been awesome and obviously bro when quarantine happened the amount of consultations that, that people booked because they had the time yeah was insane insane i've yes. never made that much money doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks, i was like well god damn i think i'm good for another four months it's just crazy you know but, i was gonna ask because yeah. oh sorry 
No, I was just going to ask because um, you said that you, um, I think it was on another podcast or something, you said you didn't have to rely on touring so much mm-hmm. as like other bands. Like you kind of like did stuff on the other side. So that's like one of the things. What other like businesses or stuff have you done that you don't have to rely on touring? Mm-hmm. Dude, touring. Um, so I did quite a bit of touring from 2015 to probably 2018. On average, it was a tour every three months for three years. Damn. So I'm not... Um, I enjoy performing. I fucking hate touring. Yeah. I love performing. I fucking hate touring. <laughs> you got that? Oh, sure. <laughs> I like being home. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, because again, I, I'm very sensitive to my environments, man. I've always been that way. And um, being at home is just, it's like, you know, my environment, I make it just, it's a very, I mean, you, it, it's like this for a reason because it's inspiring, it's calm, it's chill, you know, and I and anything that I want to do, if I want to do a video project, I have all the gear to do it. If I want to write a record, I have all the gear to do it. I have everything here. When you're on tour, I have none of this shit, you know what I'm saying? And you know, there's a lot of fucking bullshit that you have to deal with outside (laughs) the hour and a half that you're on stage. And, you know, I think what it was is, I think the thing that I learned from touring so much is to, to pace myself, you know, because I felt like there was this inherent pressure to tour, you know, based on the opportunities that were presented to me, obviously, you know, if if I'm headlining a tour with Gus G, I'm going to fucking do it. But at the same time, I'm just, I had to refine the art of saying no. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So going forward, unless it's a bigger tour, I'm only going to be touring probably once a year with the Guitar Collective. And that is it. That is it. I, I don't, I'd rather be where the people are and the people are online. You can only fit so many bodies in a fucking stadium or, 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 or like a smaller venue or whatever. I'd rather be online because that's where they're at. And that's what I built my career on is being online, you know? Yeah. So, um, but I fucking love performing, man. I love performing. I love designing my, my live shows. I love designing my merch. I love things like that. But when it comes to business and fucking money and hiring people, I don't know that well. It's never, it's never really gone well. It, out of all the tours I've done, there's only been one tour that has gone off with, I'm sorry, two that have gone off without a hitch for the most part. A bit know, and yeah, yeah. So for me, you know, um, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, gonna yeah, stay. that's crazy. Yeah, that's because that's what most bands talk about. Is like, man, the hour on stage, the half an hour on stage, whatever is awesome. But literally, right. it's twenty three hours right less like in the day where like you're at home. Like I guess like yeah, eating healthy is probably pretty easy at home. I'm assuming on on the road is not very easy right it's horrible dude it's horrible man i mean it's you know the routine and this is the thing like you can see the world motherfucker you don't get to see a goddamn thing you see (laughs) balls in a fucking venue the stale smell of beer and that's literally it like and and punishers right hey man you're awesome you're my favorite guitar i do not believe in that world at all i do not believe in that word at all man if someone comes up to me i don't give a fuck they tell me their life story i will sit there with a smile on my face and a smile on my fucking prostate with gratitude man (laughs) those motherfuckers are paying my bills and i owe that to them you know oh yeah i don't believe in that word man anyone says punisher punisher just takes shit for granted and they're going to be very sorry when they don't have any fucking one to punish them anymore. So I mean, that's uh, fair. Mike. <laughs> I always wondered that. <laughs> Cause job. like, I, I agree with that. I just like, I've just seen like one, well, actually one instance where I was like, Oh, so that's what they mean. There's this one guy who was really drunk and it was a singer of a band. He was in the crowd and he just kept slapping him in the back. He's like, dude, I fucking love And he was like really hard. Like yeah. my sugar was going, I could hear the slaps. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. dude, this guy's you going. Named, you named the only pet peeve I have. Is a slap on the back? What's up? Or just touching? Oh, touch me all you want. (laughs) (laughs) It's just Uh, a slap on the back. And the reason why is because I sweat like fucking Whitney Houston on that stage. And when you slap my back, it's like, it's a couple reasons. First of all, it hurts. Secondly, my sweat just splashes all over. I'll never forget. I was in Seattle and I sweated like, a oh my God, like Whitney Houston after a fresh freebase. And oh, I and this motherfucker went whack, 
not like whap whap what it means in 2020, but like he just fucking whapped me in the back. And I was sitting, I was standing next to the merch, you know, because that's where we were. And in the corner of my eye, I saw my merch guy go, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, my bad. How do I take this? <laughs> Oh, Jesus shit. Christ! Oh, awesome. my God. Yeah, you really get to know your comrades on. The oh man, yeah. Just that's answered a silly question for us. That uh, <laughs> we have a segment later on in the show where we ask you three random silly questions. Pet peeve is one of them. So there we go. You got any more fun pet peeves? Because mine, my biggest one. I don't know if you agree with this. Uh, chewing with your mouth open. I'm assuming <laughs> you're a cultured man. Chewing with your mouth open bothersome. Um, not really. I, I will oh, say. Yeah. Um. People's idiosyncrasies, um, as long as they're not invasive to me, I really don't give a shit, you know? Um, but it, 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 I've come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> I've come a long way, you know? I mean, because here's the thing. We're all judgmental, man. Even people who say, oh, my fucking judgmental. Eat my fucking ass. Yes, you are, dude. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But it's a matter of, I feel, what you, um, how what you react to you know what i'm saying like what you allow to bother you you know like oh yeah and a lot of the times it's like you know especially with today's climate i feel a lot of people get um you know triggered but like if you're if, if you know because i practice meditation um not as as often as i used to but it taught me a lot about not having buttons to let people push right because if you, you know, a, a lot of the times, like, if someone's kind of irking you, you know, we automatically can, we, we would say the cause of the irking would be the source of it, which would be the person. But, you know, think about it inward. It's like, they're not really doing anything that's outside of their nature. They're just doing their thing. It just so happens to bother you. So, you know, oh, yeah. who are the one that's causing your own bullshit? So, I've, I've been very conscious of that, especially when it comes to, re to relating people on tour. That's say. been um, the biggest lesson i feel um that i've learned from tours really just to how to relate to people you know in situations where i've been in one particular situation where my yellow and their blue made the absolute fucking worst shade of green oh. i've ever seen in my life the most uninspiring like you know, can exacerbate Ebola and AIDS together. Like, it's just horrible, <laughs> horrible energy, man. And, you know, and in those situations, you have a choice. Either A, you have enough self-awareness to understand what's happening with the situation and alter your color a little bit to be somewhat complimentary, just to not A, make it awkward for anyone else, and B, just simply keep the peace. Um, but even with those attempts sometimes, they, they, you're still going to have a shit color of green, you know? It's it really does take two, um, especially if the person's really, really unaware of how to navigate it and they just like, you know, especially with guitar instrumentalists, we're just swinging their fucking ego dicks like this, you know what I'm saying? Just like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just, it's very, very, um, it's a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, me, like, I have an ego, 100%, all of us have an ego, but the thing with me is that I typically embrace my ego in the four walls of my own home. I don't bring it out there with me, especially on tour. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's a certain level of confidence that you have to have. You know, like I don't want to see my guitar heroes kind of like mm, fuck that shit, man. You're a you're a fucking like. If I ever saw Inge Malmsteen, get the hell out of here. You know, you better be yeah. fucking you give, give little kicks with the leather pants and shit. You know, like <laughs> I want to see. Uh, you you need to see someone commanding the stage and commanding their their energy and stuff like that. But that's the problem with, with um, I feel, not, not all, of course, but I mean, there's a certain level of self-awareness that you have to have in order to relate to your peers, you know? And, um, and it's fine to be competitive. I'm extremely competitive, but I've learned the, a, a healthier way over the years on exactly how to compete without ruffling feathers. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. That could, I can definitely see that because I've, I've had friends who are super competitive and they definitely do it in the most ruffling of feathers way. Like the second they lose, it's all, it's like, you better not be offended easily because this guy's going to go after everyone just like, oh, what the hell? And it's just like, yeah. I've kind of thought that over the course of like, you know, growing up, obviously you grow up, you figure out that like that. I agree a thousand percent. Sadly, I'm not as mature as you because I still have like, there's like, there's three key things like, and just make me lose my mind easy it's like and one of them is like i had i had someone i knew that you know i kept 
working with them, like, like you said, not properly. And I was right. going at their attitude, even right. though that's just kind of how they are. Uh-huh. And then as I grew up, I kind of just like let it bounce off me and our relationship yeah. got a lot better. Cause there was like a year where I was just like, I'm going to fucking go at this guy every time he goes at me. And it was just like, wow, this yeah. is the worst hanging out I've ever done. This is not fun. Nothing's yeah. fun. And the second we like worked that out, it was like way better. I was like, yeah, this might be, you're right. It's absolutely the person. Mm-hmm. But you Actually, said the key word there is we. Like, it's when we worked it out, you know? Yeah. It's from one side. It has to be a mutual thing. And it could be fucking awkward, you know, confrontations awkward in general. You know, we always have, we always play it out how we want it in our head, you know? And oh, yeah. <laughs> 90, 90% of the time, we just don't have the balls to just say it, you know, because, you know, we doubt ourselves and we're not entirely sure how they're going to react to it as we think that, we're, you know, it's, it's a lot of, of playing out the situation, but ultimately you have to think about what the ultimate end goal is, you know, and I'm not, and please don't, don't, don't give me more credit than, than I deserve. I'm just aware of it. I don't, I'm not perfect with it, you know. No, you're a prophet, Angel. You're a prophet, <laughs> I know. <laughs> me, you know. <laughs> He's a philosopher that plays guitar very, very well. <laughs> Dude, that's so fucking weird that you say that, man. So there's this Instagram page called Masters of Shred. Yeah. And uh, there's a good buddy of mine that runs it. And like he posts like the fucking most obscure, like amazing guitars that no one's ever heard of. And he reposts a lot of like the modern guys too. And he gives people a name. Like he calls Andy James like like the Shred Master Supreme or something like that. And he calls me the philosopher of shreds. Because really? I swear to God. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> also, that's a way better name too. Than, like, dude, it's so cool. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Oh, man. Funny. Dude. Yeah, no, it's, uh, man, that is something like, yeah, I, dude, I'm so interested in because it's just inter- like, you know, especially being alone and like, you know, like during quarantine, I always like think like, why the hell? And like, is this like irk me or that? You know what? I, you know what thing? that's really interesting is uh admitting you're wrong in that conversation you have with yourself like you ever get into an argument and then like halfway through you're like oh no <laughs> i'm the guy like oh i was like i i had one where i just admitted about three quarters of the way through i was like i just realized like oh i'm the guy's like i better cut this off immediately i was like hey dude i'm completely wrong dude i'm sorry and it was just like that awkward energy the guy was like what yeah dude what? thanks <laughs> like what like <laughs> yeah, like, dude. Wait, was... it throws them off it throws them off man because the thing is like especially with men our temperaments like no one anticipates anyone to actually admit that they're wrong so we're just ready to, we're just armoring up emotion man we're just yeah. ready to go you know <laughs> what i'm saying like but for me my tactic is always from um it, it's always very lighthearted, light and comedic in in, in the approach because when it, especially with the delivery and how you say like, ooh, my bad, bitch, you know, like, <laughs> funny, you know what I'm saying? And, and it kind of eases the tension. And because here's the thing, like my art, bitch, I painted a wall 20 times. I take it very, very seriously. But when it comes to myself as a person, I do not take my, hello, I don't take myself seriously at all, at all, you know, as a person. It's more of what I do in life because that's my legacy. My music will be here forever. My, what I leave behind will be there forever. How can I take myself seriously as a person when I know I'm going to die one day, you know? You shouldn't, you know? But some people are just a little bit different, and, and, oh, and, yeah. that, and that's cool, man. That, that's cool, you know, but. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just always those things. Like, yeah, I just wish you, you know, you do it. Like, dude, I, I don't do that enough. I've done that, like, twice. Like, call <laughs> myself, like, like, you know, luckily I don't start many arguments, but it's just in my bloodline. My mom's a psychopath. We, she'll just, like, you mess with her. She just hauls off, and I like I don't have that too often, but Chris can tell. Like occasionally, I'll just be like, "Uh oh, his mom showed up." And he's just like, "I'm like, what's up?" Like I'm just like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh." And then after I got I, on that drive home, just like, oh, "Dude, I'm so wrong. What did I do?" Oh <laughs> my god, I know. You know what's funny? Okay, so I'll tell you the most recent apology that I, that I had to do. Now, um, I'll leave the names out. <laughs> so <laughs> I was so every name. You know, there's like, like Nam's just fucking crazy. So um, I, I started getting close to, to this one musician, this one guitarist and stuff like that. And like, we're pretty much like, kind of, I guess, like sort of neck and neck and stuff like that. And uh, he plays in a great band. And um, we were growing out one day, and then he actually moved to New York. And, and like, one of the first times he was living in Brooklyn, I was like, I went out to hang out with him with another mutual friends party. And we're hanging out, and I wasn't really up to going for a social event. I was kind of like tired, but I was like, oh my God, no, he's here. I have to, I have to go see him. So I, <laughs> I forced myself to go out. And um, I guess I wasn't really, I wasn't really present. 
you know, and he talked about starting a new band and <laughs> without, <laughs> without thinking, um, I was just like, I don't remember how I worded it, but I said something like, yeah, man, it makes total sense that you're in a band, you know, like once you hit your ceiling, you do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and here's the thing the thing that makes it worse sometimes is oh my god you know when there's a hint of truth in it that's yeah. the thing that makes it so much fucking worse yeah. and i and much like you i didn't really think about it there was no reaction there wasn't any like cold sweat of awkwardness that happens immediately there was none of that so that's the reason why i didn't really understand what it was that i said when i said oh, I was driving man. home your boy was in a length of tunnel, and I was just like, <gasps> sweat, stress sweat. I was like, oh my God, 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 oh my God. Now, mind you, this happened during the summer. So I, I held this horrible experience in my, I, I babied it for six months until I could see him again because he was traveling, he was going on tour, da, 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 and I knew that I was going to see him at NAM, and we always hang out at NAM almost all the time. Fast forward to the name that happened after I said my oh little, my little remark. God. And the entire time, every time I kept seeing him, I'm like, dude, I have to talk to you for a second. I have to talk to you for a second. Oh, I'm going to go to my signing. All right, you're going to be here? All right. Now, then he had a signing. By Sunday, I was like, dude, come here, I need to talk to you. Like, yeah, man, what's up? And he seems really cool. But you don't really know what they keep if they had it in their head the entire yeah. time. And in the backup file. Sometimes they're not even thinking of it until right. you like. And, and you know, I would say 95% of it was really from a genuine, sincere place in my heart of like, oh my God, I said something that was just so, like, I didn't put any thoughts to it and it came out of different, whatever. And 5% of it was just like, oh my God, like, what did he do, you know? Um, so I was just like, man, I said something that's a little bit off color, like, I don't know. If you remember that. And I told him what I said, he's like, I don't remember any of that. So I was like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Six you know? months of pain. Just that's, for nothing. That, that's literally that, but that that's how that's a perfect example of attaching yourself to a narrative that you create in your head, you know. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's important to own that narrative when you fuck up, you know. And at the very least, you know, maybe it, it shows a little more integrity from from my part or anyone who has done something wrong just to write it. You know what I'm saying? Aside from just like, you know, maintaining a, a relationship and a friendship. It's the right thing to do, you know. Don't let those things go because at the end of the day, maybe he did, he could have harbored. You, you never know. You never yeah. know. That's why it's really important to just un, without a lot of guard up, just to be really honest with people, you know, especially people who add value to your life, you know. And oh yeah, you know. But that's a hard thing. Yeah, it takes balls to do that, man. It takes balls to do it, you yeah. know. But the more you do it, the more your balls get it. <laughs> <laughs> the more you use it, the bigger they get. Apparently, the way you were feeling though, that, <laughs> the way you were feeling, did that help you like write a song or anything like that? Did that like any positive? No, man. Like I don't know. I'll give a shot afterwards. <laughs> Dude, I I relate to that so much. How many stupid things that no one gave a crap about that after it was like kind of just not a cool comment or just. Yeah maybe i'm a talkative person so literally maybe i just didn't shut the fuck up for some reason and really and man i went home that night every time dude how many how many times like my friends have gotten a text for me yeah dude i'm so sorry <laughs> he's like and like dude i didn't even give a crap and i'm like i've been thinking about this for hours <laughs> yeah, absolutely you know and at the very least it just shows that you give a fuck man it shows yeah. you're fucking that you're aware and you know again that you don't take yourself so seriously you have to save face like that oh yeah dude it's crazy dude because when you're around those people sometimes it's like i don't know i like uh some people like i've had a boss whose like ego is pretty crazy he was super fun to hang out with but god forbid you did anything that maybe was slightly competitive you know he was like a former boxer and if you just mentioned anything like hey dude what's up he's like i'll punch you i'm like why why does that just go right there he's just like he's just like I'm like whoa dude because i'm not like that at all so i'm just right. like all right, I'll just take it. Yeah, dirt, dirt, whatever, bro. Anyways, let's talk about uh, UFC or something. I don't know. <laughs> right, like, but geez. it's also a matter of like, like you know, especially on tour, like it's ball busting, dude. It's fucking ball busting. It's this guy cracking on this guy. This it's a, that's what touring really like. <laughs> is. But it's a matter of friendly banter. It's it's yeah. a fucking guy thing. It's something that we just do, you know. Um, but 
and, and it's always a situation where it's like if if you're the kind of person where you're like a sensitive person and i'm a sensitive person you know but like i i, I found touring really roughed me up too um <laughs> i'm but a like, hardened soul yeah um, <laughs> but i would say that you know it, it the weak ones that show that they're like upset or whatever like you can't you can't show that you know because you were going to be the brunt of every joke of for the entire mm -hmm. month and i don't really like that honestly like that that's like high school bullying kind of shit you know but some in moderation bro it's funny it's fucking fun Fantastic. rag on me rag on me because <laughs> i am like i am a fucking i am a source like i swear to god if i went on like a, a comedy tour which some of my shows have turned into that for one reason or another <laughs> Like, I would just be the source of so many jokes, and I think that's just so fucking awesome. <laughs> dude, some the, dude, some of the best jokes I've ever heard have been about, like, dude, like you get hit with, like, a friend just hits a good comment at you. You're just like, wow, that's so funny. <laughs> Fuck you, but that's good. <laughs> dude, <laughs> exactly. it's some of the best things ever. Like, yeah, dude, nothing is worth You know I feel bad for, it, and I'm guessing they don't fare well on tour either, especially because tour seems like it's high school for adults, I guess. It's like uh, people who are slightly awkward and they don't know how to say things properly. So, like, they'll say the same joke as you, but they don't say it in the right tone or it just comes Literally. off awkward. It's like, wow, that joke sucked. It's like, and then they just take the insults or, you know, they try to hit you back with an insult and it sounds serious. It's not joking. It's like, oh, man, you're just losing all fronts, dude. This sucks. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Like, yeah dude it, that's what it is but it's it's like sometimes it because again men are just like i think we're just inherently competitive but when you have two individuals who are really good at the ball busting and Oof. seeing them go back and forth bro it's that is some funny shit but it can very easily get out of line oh, i've seen that so <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite that's thing to get off on tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's legend. That's like that's the reason I follow like comedy podcasts. Like, dude, when mm. when you get like two comedians who are just legends that just ripping people apart, and they're actually willing to like dance with each other, oh, oh it's yeah. the best. Absolutely, absolutely, man. It's it's fucking great. I think you know. I mean, because I'm a big, I, I love Frank Zappa. You know, who definitely had a really quirky way of kind of infusing the comedy and the humor. It, I, I don't like not all the stuff moved me, but a good amount of it did. Um, so there, there have been some shows where, um, you know, it'll turn into, it'll turn into like 10, 15 minutes of stand-up comedy, just because, um, I'll give you a perfect example. <laughs> so Boise, Idaho on my last tour, we went through a pretty rough time with, um, like the people we were hiring. Cause it was during the season where everyone was fucking touring. So everyone was out. And, um, so we had this, <laughs> We had this new sound guy who just flew in, red eye, didn't know things. And <laughs> while he's, you know, we do this jam for the guitar club. It was like kind of like my G3. We're all up on stage, and Nita Strauss, it was Nita Strauss, me, and Jackie Vincent. And he was like, dude, I have no sound. I have no sound. I have no sound. What's going on? And I could see him just like fucking struggling with the board. He's just, and I was just like, all right, so we're going to talk about the first time I had sex. So what happened was, you know, and it just spiraled to, you know, oh, here we go. Talk about spiraling. That's literally what happened. <laughs> um, what a yeah, great so like it, um, it, it turned into just this, because the thing is, it's like you can feel the energy of the crowd, man. It's like, it's like being on a date. When they're laughing and they're reacting to you, you know you're good. And I had no choice, dude. Like, it's my fucking tour. I have to buy time. I have to entertain these people while homeboy had a fucking nervous breakdown, now, you know? <laughs> and, um, and, it just, and it just went, and it just went, and it just went. And this is Boise, Idaho, keep in mind. You know, this is, like, it's, it's I don't know what their political views are, but I can feel the temperament, and, and they, these weren't my people. So, um, <laughs> oh, it, but it, it was fucking great, man. It's, but you just have to vibe, you just have to vibe it out, man. Oh yeah. Um, and, and it was a good time. It was a really good time. So, you know, you just gotta play it by ear. But yeah, you know, comedy's a nice. Here's the thing, like, and this is the reason why a lot of like YouTubers like they go to comedy. When they go to comedy, it's because that's the most relatable thing. Whether you're into doom metal, black metal, goth metal, progressive metal, whatever, that doesn't matter. The one thing that can take progressive metal people and Madonna fans and whoever is humor. That's the 
it doesn't matter what genre you play. That's the one thing that's always relatable. And that's the reason why a lot of like these YouTubers get millions of views. Because it doesn't matter that they're playing metal core. It's fucking funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. It, it's yeah. unbelievable, actually. Like, just cause, Well, also, it brings you down to earth. So, like, yeah. I've noticed, like, when you're, like, super serious, like, people, especially if you're in a position of, like, not power, but, like, you're, like, an idol. Like, you're just, like, a super great guitarist. And if you're never funny, like, never – or not even like that, or you just don't – you take yourself seriously too much, it's right. super hard to approach those people because, like, wow, you're amazing, and I look up to you, and I have nothing to relate to because you're just, like, a stone wall of talent. And right, it's, like, right. but if they crack, like, a dick joke to you, you're, like, what the fuck? You're, like, yeah, all right, exactly. what's up, man? How's it going? You want to get a beer? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> just immediately. That's exactly what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> I think that, you know, I guess now people are a little bit more aware because um, I'm very, very much myself. But at first, when I first started touring, no one really – just people – never heard me speak they don't, they don't know what the fuck and then you know they see me on stage like cracking these jokes and, and some of them are like scripted and there's things that happen in the show that are supposed to be funny like that you know i, I plan but then i kind of improvise off of them um yeah. and i so people are just like i had i, I had no idea because you know? <laughs> like, they see like the concept albums and they see all this this fucking artsy fartsy kind of shit and the way that i dress and the way that i conduct myself and how everything's super fucking polished and well thought out and they don't expect me to be talking about dicks and prostates and like <laughs> and stuff like that you know like we're talking about how porn stars lose the sponge and it sounds like it smells like a dead corpse on set they don't expect <laughs> that shit. but that's what they got <laughs> <laughs> oh dude that's uh, awesome it's a good time man it's a good time <laughs> I think uh, I think when the, actually that the clinic you did at Bumondo, I think I couldn't see the faces, but there was a few tones. Like when you made like you know you're just doing your angel thing, you're just hauling off in jokes. I was just like, man, they just did, weren't prepared. Some of these because they're laughing, but they're like they sound like that nervous laughter. Like I didn't know this was gonna happen. I thought yeah. I was gonna find out how to do like arpeggios and like legato stuff. I didn't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Oh, man. Man, that's why I love doing clinics, man, because it's just like a fucking hang with a bunch of friends, man. You know, it's, it's just so uninhibited, but I mean, like, you know, like even the way that I teach it and the approach of it is, you know, I can always make a parallel to something else, you know, like, you know, if you're doing like, you know, a fucking stretch from like, you know, one to eight, something stupid like that, you know, I can be like, all right, so you might want to approach it like a musical gynecologist. You want to go in for three, then four, then five, then five, then five, then five, then wham, right in, you know, he's going to. There's a procedure involved, you know, so it's just like that that just makes it kind of funny and you know colorful and memorable. You won't forget that. You no. Know? no, not at all. Like, yeah, like literally, your personality. I literally listened to like two of your songs and watched that guitar uh, clinic. I never forgot you. I think I was like, because I'm always like, my mind's. Bought. I go to an album, I listen to it for like three months, mm -hmm. and I go to here. It's like I always thought, like, dude man not to suck you off here or anything i was there's always that moment in the podcast where i'm just like yo you're awesome everything Every you podcast. Do is awesome there's always that one moment the jerk off, yeah. off session it's i agree a thousand <laughs> <It's the bed> <laughs> yeah. welcome exactly. to jesse's bed sheet <laughs> oh man i appreciate that man that's what's up no it's it just makes sense because sometimes like i've i don't know as you grow up you start like uh I don't know what it is. It's not like uh, when people like you stop like caring about meeting people, I guess, as you grow up, like there's people like your heroes, but then it's like, if there's like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio was in my town, I didn't rush into town to stand at the gate. Like, Oh, Leo, Leo. it's like, yeah. Oh, if I see him, that'd be pretty cool. But ah, like, you know, but then you meet some of these people. It's like some of the personalities. I'm like, dude, it's like, have fun, man. I remember, uh, was it eSport? You know, I'm into video games. There was like this eSport dude and he was so like, you know, like someone that would play video games for thousands and thousands of hours. Yeah. Pretty In person, they're pretty sheltered. They're pretty like, and it's like, man, yeah. pop off a little bit, dude. Just like have a little fun, dude. People are going to remember you because in a sea of people that are just like looking at their phones, it's like, yeah. you remember that guy that talks so just has fun and just like a bubbly personality goes a long way. That's the word personality in general, you know, and that yeah. kind of, I guess, you know, it, um, you know, when you take like like streaming, it's a perfect example. Like obviously a lot of musicians can't really tour, so a lot of them are streaming. Um, and the interesting thing about, so, cause I'm actually planning, I'm actually launching uh, my first season of my stream this month. No one oh, nice. but you know, hence why this stream looks like fucking fast. <laughs> but um, the funny thing, so like, you know, whatever I get into, I, now I've, okay, so, 
I've been live streaming for fucking years. Like before YouTube had it. So there was a site called Ustream that yeah. everyone used. And I would do it, you know, and I've done it on and off for, for a while. So like when I do it now, I got to do it like once every two or three months, but I'm on there for six to eight hours. I'm not fucking kidding. Go on YouTube. I'm on there for six to eight hours. Cause I just have such a good time and it's fun, you know? Um, but, uh, but obviously when quarantine happened and everyone started streaming, like all my fans started bombarding me like, yo, where the fuck you at? <laughs> um, Show up. So, yeah, so what I did was I was like, you know what, let me educate myself on, like, the fucking streamers, you know, like, let's see, I want to know what it is that they're doing just so I can learn what, so I can learn what they're really good at and figure out a way that I can do what they're doing, but in the way that I would do it, right? Yeah. And just to educate myself overall, and the, and the thing that I realized was the amount of people that I'm seeing streaming who really don't have the personality to stream. You know what I'm saying? It's like, listen, you could be the most amazing guitarist in the world, but it doesn't mean that you can teach someone how to play guitar. Right. You could be the most amazing guitarist in the world. It doesn't mean that you know how to like, you know, um, design a light show or, or to do X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? So like there's certain tools, there's certain talents and skills that people need to do X, Y, and Z, you know, like, and the thing that, seeing some of these streamers taught me was what not to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like it. i was like oh my god dude this is like drier than like oh god i need to do like a fucking i need to just like oh painful man it was so bad and you can even like it's strange being in some of them too because you can feel like the collective energy of the group even though they're in all parts of the world oh, it's yeah. a weird fucking vibe man and i've never been from the end user standpoint i've always been the, the one streaming so um it's been a really really educational process um but yeah that's that's a whole other undertaking that that i'm going to be doing this month along with everything else because i felt like the deal was like you know what i have a new record coming out i have two new records coming out you know i'm working on a, a third signature guitar with charvel i got shit in the oven bitch i should, <laughs> I should talk to people about this i think that they'll find it you know really entertaining and um obviously this is the climate where you know not maybe not so much anymore but obviously march april shit was all sorts of fucked up so um you know like i say better late than pregnant so here i am september 2020 <laughs> is it gonna be through like twitch and stuff like that or you're gonna use ah! a different platform oh, hell no listen this is this is the thing so it's gonna be on youtube now the reason it's gonna be on youtube because i am not trying to start from scratch at zero bitch i got 176 thousand <laughs> fucking people out there so yeah. i'm like Woo! <laughs> Oh, man. But I don't know. Maybe if it, maybe if it does really well, you know, I'm not a uh, not opposed to it. But that, it's going to be on uh, YouTube for sure at first. And is this going to be like scheduled out? Or are you going to be doing it like yeah. once a week or like every month or something like that? It's be once a week, and I have commitment issues. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like this is this is me playing tips in with commitment. So um, maybe after this, I can get a husband. <laughs> You're going to be like Devin Townsend. I love what Devin Townsend does. He just goes on Twitter, goes like. You guys want me to stream tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> and then you have exactly. all the people on Twitter like hitting him up. He's like, okay, I'll stream tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's like, that was like my first, but I was like, you know what? There has to be some level of consistency. So, you know, and, um, and, and it's not something I'm really doing for myself as much as my fans, you know, because I will say that the whole, like, Patreon's a good example. The only reason why I did that was, is like, I was trying to think of the ultimate thank you you know, that I, that I can give to people who've been supporting me since day one. And that is, I mean, the fact that anyone has that is just like, it's such a rare thing, man, especially after, you know, 17 years of doing it. So one of the things people were asking, like, how do you play this? How do you play this? You want to do some lessons? And I was like, I didn't know where I wanted to put the lessons at, you know, so I figured I'll, I'll start a Patreon for just the most dedicated fans. And it's worked out very well. They're very happy. I'm very happy. Um, but then it came to like, you know, the people who can't necessarily maybe afford it, you know? And I was like, I don't want to leave them out. So the stream, I feel like, is the best way to kind of, like, inherently, you know, connect with people. But it's, it's entertainment, you know, it's entertainment. And, yeah. and, and, and there, there's a need for that. Um, there's a need for <coughs> good entertainment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> yes. Definitely so. So, um, and that's the thing. I think it's a matter of knowing what you're really good at. And, you know, um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at that, you know, and it's fun for me. And um, what's the harm in it? You know, I have the ability, obviously, I have the fucking setup. Like, it, it almost seems like a waste not to. Yeah. Um, and again, 
my ideas are very expensive. <laughs> so <laughs> anything that I can make off of it would be fucking great. So I go win win across the board, you know. I think the only thing is a matter of like, you know, obviously it can become a little time consuming, but um you just gotta really stay disciplined with it, you know, and kind of like, you know, see it through. So I'm gonna see it through and see how it goes. Oh dude, that's awesome. I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah it's uh yeah, there's nothing worse to watch a stream when someone like they're when someone's like super popular and it's like it's just like sometimes they're like personality it's like man maybe they're really good at what they're doing but it's like what they're they are like saying it's like like you said yeah it's like dude this is not fun like you, you're just really good at what you do man i don't really want to hear you talk though <laughs> well, that's, like, well that's the thing you know it's yeah. just like he's like going on a date just shut up, just shut up you're very attractive just shut up, just yeah. shut up. Just <laughs> don't, don't ruin the image take a picture exactly. of your face i'm going home send it to me <laughs> But then at the same time, you know, I feel like what, what kind of happened with my brain is that once I started, because there was obviously an apprehension um, because I wanted to learn, I wanted to earn my career by merit, right? So I didn't even come out as openly gay until like 2014. Keep in mind, I started this in 20, 2004. I started this solar. So I didn't come out until like 10 years into it. If someone at a show asked me one-on-one, like, I'm like, yeah, you know, I have no shame in it. But I did not want to be the gimmicky, like, you know, use the gay shredder. I wanted to earn my success <laughs> by the fact that I'm good at what I do. And then I did. And then it got to the point where um, there was a Rock Foundation, which I'm, I'm sure that you know that Laura works for quite a bit. And um, they had this campaign of, uh, you know, I matter because, and um, Joe Panola asked me to like, hey, would you be down to do this campaign? Of course, Taylor do it. I'm like, yeah, sure, man, anything for you. So like, I, you know, I was thinking about, oh man, do I want to open the scan worms? And I was like, fuck it ready so i matter because i'm openly gay in the metal industry and and it really was it, it did so it's just it was probably one of the highlights in my career because i mean just the overwhelming amount of support that's one aspect of it but then the fucking private messages that i got was just like i just i get goosebumps every time i think about it man because it that's was awesome. just you know like and, and you don't really think you have the responsibility to like really affect people's lives, but like, dude, like people came out because of me, man. Like people came out because of me. Like what the fuck? That's um, man. Which was like, which is really huge for me. Then, and at that point, I understood the power of being authentic. And once I was much more vocal with how I am and my personality and just whatever, that's when I felt like people, you know, it's like you know when you get to know the person that's creating the art behind the art that you love it can make you love it more, hate it more. And luckily for me, like people just really attached themselves because they understood the person behind it. And, um, and I was really, um, to this, I'm just, it's still unexplainably grateful for that, you know, because it's hard, you know, imagine if you're an amazing guitarist and you're just a fucking piece of shit, you know? <laughs> you're right. You know, and th- that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> In a yeah. realm, like, if you if this was 1983, it wouldn't matter because no one had the opportunity to get to know you. But here in 20, in this age, you know, it's like, you know, connecting. You're selling with, your personality. It, it's like you, you're connecting with your fans on such a more intimate level. If you choose to sell your personality, great. If you feel like you have it, like, but you know, like a good example, like there's certain people that are just so good at what they do, they don't need it. And then there's like. It's like an algorithm of success. Certain people have certain things that the formula works for them, but not for other people. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like if I became a, a memer YouTuber like that, I, I mean, I could do it, but that would be really off brand for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, whereas like if, um, I don't know, if Malmsteen was going to do an album when he's painting his room and being on Artsy Farty, that's really weird for him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but that's the thing. It's a matter of knowing what you're really good at and knowing what you're not good at. And I know what I'm not good at. I'm not going to do it. You know? <laughs> like, so, um, yeah, you know, it, I mean, it's important. But sometimes you throw yourself in a situation thinking you can do it and, and you figure out that you can. And you just gracefully bow out. <laughs> this ain't the room I was meant to be in. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya. All right, so a question I have for you is uh, back in, like, was it 2012, 2013, you worked with Tommy Vex on an EP on a band and stuff like that. Um, You haven't worked with him since, right? Are you guys planning on doing anything together? Have you guys talked since? No, yeah, yeah, we're good buddies, man. Um, We did talk about um, re-releasing that record and maybe possibly reviving Vex. Um, but obviously with Bad Wolves constantly torn, they're just, they're, they're killing it. Yeah, they oh, yeah, well. Um, 
and you know, it's just, that's obviously his first priority, which is incredibly important. And, um, and obviously I have my own thing here and obviously I have my own band now too, um, which may make it a little bit more difficult, but I'm definitely not opposed to it. You know, we're still buddies and I still love him. He's like, you know, it's like, that's my brother, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he's a very, uh, like, I, I've been very spoiled with Frontman, man. Like, before, obviously, with before him, I was in 40 Below Summer. Well, Black Market Hero, which is um, second wave of 140 Below Summer went away. Like, they reformed a new band called Black Market Hero. So it was members of 40 Below and Flaw, and then me. Very weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know, yeah. Steph, like, for me, like, I grew up with the new metal and shit like that. So, like, you know, I'm 35. I don't know what I'm looking, but I'm 35. So <laughs> when it came to... Um, you know, working with them, dude, like I work like Max Village and Tommy Vex are two of the most amazing frontmen you will ever see step foot on the stage. Fucking insanity. In controlled insanity. Like it's just it's insane to watch them do what they do. And um uh, I learned a lot. Well, Max, I was I was in uh because of 40 is is a uh, bitch, I don't know years anymore, but I learned so much from watching him, man, because at that time, <clears throat> this must have been around 2000, like late 2000s. And, you know, I never had the interest of being a front man. You know, obviously I'm a solo artist. You have to assume that role, but I literally learned how to perform and be a front man from like guys like Max and guys like Tommy Vex, you know? That's huge. And then just seeing like, you know, like my guitar heroes like Malmsteen and Vi, you know, like, the entertaining ones, <laughs> you know, and, and Iron Maiden and shit like that. Like, you know, those were, oh, my camera went away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're back in black and ever. All right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, you know, like, they, they literally taught me how to wield the crowd, and I've never seen anyone. You will you will never see anyone wield the crowd like Tommy Vex. Oh. You won't find, have you ever seen him Wolves Live? Yeah. We got to see him literally, like, I think, as they took their helicopter off to like start them like yeah. they were going on their first tour they decided to do a headliner theater. at gramercy theater and then like oh, they just yeah, been, yeah, yeah. yeah um they were just running dude it's insane like so actually I pretty uh not almost, almost every time they've toured in the area like i'll get on stage with them and play um uh bitch why am i blanking on that song hmm. oh my god what's the, the cover Yes, thank you. Holy shit. Zombie. Oh, zombie? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I thought, what like, song could it be? Like fucking mental shit. Off my body. <laughs> um, yeah, like, like so I go on stage with them, um, you know, and we'll jam zombie and we'll have a fucking great time, man. But it's just like, it, it's it's the same energy of like when I was jamming with them in Vex, man. Like just seeing Tommy, it's like, it's, it's his motherfucking show, dude. And rightfully so, because he's just so incredibly good at what he does like i oh, have yeah. so much respect for him man and, um but yeah but yeah i mean there's nothing in the works as of right now but maybe sometime in the future hopefully well do you ever like i know some guys when they write something like oh this would be perfect for this vocalist or this person mm -hmm. like sometimes they hear like do you ever write a riff and like this would be great with tommy's voice over it <laughs> yeah um i guess not inherently because um like, I guess it's the intention of what I'm writing. So like, if I know if I'm writing, it's right. I'm writing for something already, you know? True. Um, so, you know, in, in the event that, you know, like we, if we were to start something up, up again, obviously I would write stuff that I feel would be very suited for his voice and his style. Um, because essentially what, what vexed was, it was kind of like a metal Nickelback Chevelle with, with a brown singer, you know, and, and, and a low F sharp. <laughs> right. Three different bands right there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it was, um, so it was really easy. Like even like the solos and on that record there, it wasn't, a, it was just fucking appropriate. You know, even when I do a guest solo for another band, it's very appropriate. You know, like there's, uh, I did this guest solo for Carnifex, which is like, you know, straight up death metal. Oh yeah. <laughs> sounded like it worked, you know? And then I did a guest solo for like, you know, just something like, like ballads and stuff like you phrase for that. And um, yeah, I'm just grateful to, to be able to do that. And I think the reason why I'm able to do that was because just I grew up with just loving so many different genres of music, but not only loving them, but just listening to them so much that the blueprints of those genres stick with you. So like, you know, it's really easy for me to write a Latin jazz song because I listen to it, you know, and yeah. 
my first ever musical experience was playing at church, was playing that music. So, you know, it, it was pretty easy for me. And the amount of, again, compatibility, like we work so well together, you know, it's like, uh, it's really easy. So, you know, but hopefully sometime in the future, we'll see what happens. I know you guys were offered like a record deal, but um, did you stay away from that because it was like the record label was too controlling or you don't like giving like the rights was, away to your scared. music? I was 100% scared. Um, I, I have, uh, well, at the time especially, I had really bad trust issues. I was just like really nervous with letting anyone else own my music. And um, at the time, so, the, so this was 2012, so... I was working on a movie with words part one at the time of Vexed and um, R.A.P. came out, which I'm still super fucking proud of. I love that record. Um, and we were getting deals and I just got cold feet, man. I was just like this. My gut is just telling me something's not right. I don't know what it was. It wasn't that the person that was offering this the deal was untrustworthy at all. It's just like a gut instinct that just felt wrong for me i don't know why i don't know why but when my gut says something i fucking listen to it. and obviously thank god i listen to it because i'm in a position now where I'm, I'm quite literally living my dream and i don't take a second for it for granted um who knows what would have happened if if that you know yeah. um but uh luckily everything fell into place tommy is where he belongs and i'm where i belong right now and i'm very much on my way of where i will end up so you have no interest in labels at all really though right like you're doing so great by yourself yeah uh it depends on the project uh with this new band i think i'm a little bit more open to it mostly because i have leverage because i i established myself um and also the, the the drummer of the band is a very seasoned veteran with very trustworthy contacts who are interested in the group and i trust him so it took a couple of years for me to learn the art of letting go of being controlling and to choose who you work with very, very wisely in a sense that obviously not that anyone in the Vex band wasn't untrustworthy because Bill is still playing with me. AJ is still a very good friend of mine and obviously I'm still good buddies with Tommy. Um, but when it comes right down to it, uh, now that I'm a lot more knowledgeable, and so I have a safety net. My solo career will always be mine. It will be no one else's unless something, I would never say never, but it's very unlikely. Um, I'm a lot more open to that possibility now, but it depends. I don't know what a deal would look like in 2020. So yeah, they're so yeah. varied right now. I know a lot of people just like having the label for like the distribution and kind of like the promo kind of side of it. Cause uh, sometimes like, as you know, it's sometimes, doing all that yourself can be uh, overwhelming yeah it is overwhelming and it, it can be limiting as well um distribution not so much because distribution we can get on our own but when it comes to just really getting on tours now the music industry is incredibly political in a sense of like you know the, a lot of the bands they'll only take their friends out on tour with them or people that they're close to or label mates. Now you have to understand that if a label is putting a tour together, they're going to try to put as many of their artists on that tour as possible because they're getting a cut of X, Y, and Z while that band's on tour. Yeah. So it makes sense from a, from a business aspect, but the problem is this, the fans really get the shorthand of it because the tours that it's like, there's a fucking no brainer. Why is not X, Y, and Z touring with X, Y, and Z and this guy, the fans will never get that because there's so many politics and, this manager doing a favor for this guy, da, 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 and then there's tours that really don't make that much sense. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, the fans get the brunt of it. But, you know, um, that's really, I feel like, the only appeal of a label because, you know, aside from being a bank, like if I want, like, I could just go to a bank, just get a fucking loan, <laughs> get that shit off slow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what the fuck else is the difference? But the difference is really just a matter of your touring band. You know, it is, it may be in your best interest to maybe consider, you know, bringing a label on board just to get you those, get you on those tours. Um, Did you miss out on getting a lot of shows and gigs and tours and stuff like that? Hell yeah, dude. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Are you kidding me? Dude? Like, think about it. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's just so obvious. I'm not even going to say it, but yeah, fuck <laughs> it, dude. Like, you know, a lot of it is politics, man. It's all politics. And it's also a matter of, um, I feel 
maybe partly that some some people and bands are getting to know other artists through the eyes of people that hate that artist without getting to know them, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, which I've definitely been that's definitely been the situation for me. Um and aside from me not having a manager going out there and sucking people's dick to get me on a tour, it's me. So it, it's it's a matter of just being a genuinely good, authentic person that is friends with people that respect them. You know, like, you know, after the intervals tour, I came home and I got an email from Gus G saying that, oh, dude, I love your music. I would love to go on tour. I was like, well, funny enough, I'm starting the tour in September. Let's do the tour together, you know? And from that, you know, came a beautiful friendship and we're really good buddies and we're really supportive. The same thing with me and Andy James and Skill the Summit and, you know, Nita Strauss and all the, all the people that I've toured with. Um, I've been really lucky in that respect. Um, but yeah, for sure. 100% man. Like, you know, there's a lot of tours. It's just like, why is an angel on that tour? Well, <laughs> who the fuck knows? <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say there's, there's one band I was talking to and he said that a lot of times they were like offered tours, like, Hey, would you want to open up for, um, I don't know. I don't want to say the band, but he said a big band offered them a tour and then they said, yes. And they're like, all right, you're going to have to pay like a couple thousand dollars to get on. And he was That's like, are you kidding yeah. me? And that kept happening over and over. Well, here's the thing. So to be completely honest with, with that regard, yes. Um, when, you know, um, when a, a small artist is going on with a bigger artist, you might have to pay like around $10,000, $20,000, depending on how big that band is. Now, uh, and that's just to get on the bill. You still will get a guarantee every night. You don't need like $200, something like that. But you have to pay to play. And uh, I never really subscribed to that. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's just a matter of fact. That's how it's been. Um, and that's how a lot of times you see tours be announced. It's like, what the fuck? Huh? It doesn't make any sense, you know? And it's because, you know, people have money. They have investors. They know people. It's all about who you know. It's all about who you know. You could be the most amazing guitarist in the world. It's just, it, it's really a lot about who you know, you know, right. and how many people you can get in that room, like a hundred, like guaranteed. But um, it's just a lot of politics, man. Yeah. Expenses yeah. politics. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why they always say is like, sometimes it doesn't even pay to be the best. Sometimes it pays to be a, just a nice guy. <laughs> Yeah. Like you're decent at your instrument and you yeah. can do everything. But like, if you're cool to hang out with, it's like, you might get picked over that weird guy in the corner. That's probably the best guitarist in the world, but it's like. All is, it's 100% about the kind of person that you are. I would like above anything, because the kind of person that you are is going to be the way that you navigate meeting the right people. Yeah. Because you know, if you're, if you're a good time, like pretty much almost every NAM party, they're, they, I get invited to almost every NAMM party because I'm a fucking riot. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you caffeinate this. You caffeinate this. You put this it's in It's over. A bitch. <laughs> I need a fucking octane rating. <laughs> no, 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 You know? But again, um, listen, I, at the end of the day, even someone like, I know that I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I know that, you know? But I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. yeah but it, but you have to be okay with that you know it, not everyone's going to be uh receptive to the kind of person that you are even if you're nice even if you're cool you know especially he's too nice so something yeah. that i have is he's a little too nice it's I like trust him all now. right <laughs> exactly my fucking yes 100 percent. you know people get speculative of, of those kinds of things but you know again these are all are all powerful individuals viewing uh, a band or or a reputation of a band or, or a single person whoever it is through their own life experience and the people that they value and their opinions of that you know what i'm saying it's just like oh, yeah. a big circle jerk of, of, of bullshit <laughs> <laughs> best way to put it right well i want to break it into a nice little segment we mentioned before the three random silly questions segment uh you ready to take part in this love it there you go. ready to get silly Ready to get to the latest? <laughs> you already answered one of them. <laughs> it's, it's time to one. get <laughs> All right. Um, all right. What's the uh, – we ask every band this. What's a tour prank that you've witnessed or been a part of? Best tour prank. Best tour prank. Um, wait, I haven't had many. I haven't had many, to be honest. Um just a light party do you actually uh, um no i never really 
The only cute thing that happened was on the, on the 2017 Guitar Collective Tour, uh, on the last day when we played Serotonin, um, <laughs> like all the crew, cause like it's like a dancing video, like the music video. So like all the crew, everyone just fucking jumped on stage and danced for the whole song. It was, oh, it was, awesome. it was so much fucking fun. Um, but that was literally it. Like I can't. Like, <laughs> it's probably better off. Sometimes yeah. pranks go a little too far. Yeah, yeah we got like dead, <laughs> dead costumes on the windshields. Oh yeah, under that the chair. one. <laughs> yeah, that one was brutal yeah that was, was the most like, brutal i think and then we had ones where they like uh, uh someone told me they put glitter in the snare uh like so when like he hit it it just went all over him he says for like a couple drag queen threw up on stage <laughs> he said he was finding glitter for the rest of the tour after that I wouldn't for go sure away. yeah <laughs> it got everywhere <laughs> damn yeah no like we i never really had a no probably better off yeah right yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah because okay. some pranks like when i hear them i'm like yeah. man that's kind of funny but man you do that to the wrong person you might just get hit it's like is yeah, it yeah, worth it I, I mean i've heard some bad ones of like um i don't remember i honestly don't remember who told me this story but someone told me that there was a there was a, a girl either in the band or in the crew or something like that and they were going back and forth and this guy literally took shit and put it underneath no. The, I swear to God, um, the door handle getting on the bus, knowing that she was going to get on the bus next or something like that, oh. and she had fucking shit all over her. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> cool thing, no. This is the cool thing. It's just like, that bitch can hang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, apparently, she was giving it back to them, and it got to the point where, like, hey, listen, if you're going to fucking make someone touch your shit, what did they do to you? That's my home. I don't know who she is, but we're oh, here. <laughs> Dude. Dude. You know what would be the most gangster when she gets on the bus, just slaps him in the face with it? Just like, what's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right back to you, dude. Just like, yeah. high five. <laughs> just like, oh. That'd be the worst. Oh, dude, when Feces gets involved, dude, from afar, yeah, hilarious. Oh, but if I'm in the room, nice. I'm like, nah, get me out of here. I don't want to be. <laughs> it's just not no, a part of it. Don't people shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Emotionally or physically. Uh, yeah. Next question. Well, on emotional <laughs> level. Oh, Actually, I think this is a nice question to ask next. Uh, which metal band deserves their own candy bar, and what would it be called? Ooh, what metal band deserves their own candy bar? Hmm. Hold on, let me go on the metal playlist on Spotify, bitch, because I can't remember a goddamn metal band in my mind. Hold on, let me see. What metal band deserves their own candy bar? <laughs> hmm. Oh, man. Hmm. Gojira. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Only because, like, from a branding aspect, it sounds like a Filipino candy bar. Gojira. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. It just has, like, an ethnic, ex exotic ring to it. Yeah. Well, I think of their song, The Heaviest Man in the Universe. I feel like you can try to make that the heaviest bar in the universe. I'm really bad at these. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the heaviest man in the universe is the heaviest man in the universe because he ate so many of those fucking candy bars and they're extremely unhealthy. Yeah, like the, the 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 negative spokesperson is like, yeah, I did not lose weight on these candy bars. I've gained all of the weight on these candy bars. He would be the anti Jared, and he would be so famous for being authentic. There you go. Like this, just gonna fucking kill you. But you'll have a good time putting it in your mouth. Do you want to be on my one thousand pound life? This is the bar for you. <laughs> Other bands we got were Meshuga, um, Hate Breed. That was another one too. Okay. Hey, yeah. Included. The one I, I came I, at four o'clock in the morning, you're gonna get an email from me and you're gonna be like, "Oh, this one." Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm everyone always be, says. Yeah, I'm gonna be really upset that I didn't think about it like right now. I should have emailed you beforehand. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Jess, you want to take the third one? I know you like this. What? Well, oh, mm. actually, there's two. I know you like asking. Yeah, this well, the ones are usually short, but you're also healthy, so I don't know if eh. Now we'll go with this. <laughs> if <laughs> if McDonald's had an angry meal, what would it be? Ass, ass, just ass, a box of ass. I <laughs> <laughs> would. Depending on how you look at it, an ass is a box. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just hands, just a uh, cheek, not even a full ass, just a cheek. It's like what? Just a half a cheek, just a little bit, like tips in. Um, I'm so. <laughs> I got so sad. What was the fucking question? I just said, <laughs> I just, I'm backed up, man. <laughs> uh, 
if McDonald's had an angry meal, what would it be? Oh man, an angry meal, dude. Yeah. Those things are fucking angry as it is. Have you ever had one of those? <laughs> Every day of my, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. That's I mean, I grew up in, that's probably yeah. why I was like a, a, a very bitter little Puerto Rican growing up. But I mean, yeah, dude, they're, they're just like all you like. It's like the most American thing ever, and we are a fucking angry country, man. So like, just just don't just let it be, man. Just <laughs> here's a happy meal. Enjoy. That's going to be the next poster up on, like, the window of, like, uh, McDonald's. Like, two for five, Angel Vivaldi. Angry. Happy Meal is already angry enough. Don't need, <laughs> repurposed as the angry meal. <laughs> there you go, the angry just meal. A whole, a whole, like, ad thing, just kids eating uh, apple sh- uh, <laughs> apple slices with a frown just the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually crazy. That's like the saddest meal. Or <laughs> 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 well, at least from people that are, like, you know, in like fucking whatever section of the Bible belt was like the heaviest, most unhealthiest. That'll be like their their epitome of like a sad meal. I said, dude, someone said they would make a three thousand calorie burger and just throw everything on it, <laughs> and I was just like, I got I got heavy breathing just thinking. I like I hate those kind of burgers. I'm just like, oh my heart, <sighs> just like, it's just it's just too it's much, man. Oh um, yeah. But yo, I'll eat one. Fuck it, bro. <laughs> when, dude, when a burger becomes something you have to eat with a fork and knife, it's just like there's too many toppings. It's just not <laughs> possible not, to eat. I, I can't argue with that at all. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we got a bonus round for you. Ready for one more? I love it, yeah. All right. If you had to pick a movie and place the main actor with Danny DeVito, who would it be? Oh, my God. Okay, so if there was a movie, I would replace the main actor with Danny DeVito. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Up, Danny DeVito, shut your camera off. He doesn't <laughs> yeah, want to. Yeah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't like that at all. <laughs> um, fuck, so I'm not the biggest movie buff, but I would say with Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Um... <laughs> it's like sit and spin, bitch, I'm taking that advice. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, ooh, now I'm busy. Um... <laughs> Fuck. Now I'm too focused on being dizzy to really think about the question. What the fuck is the question again? All right, the movie with the name video. Um, you want suggestions? <laughs> we got some. Yes, I do, actually. That'd be great. We got uh, Die Hard. We got Titanic. We got Lethal Weapon, which oh, kind of already God. happened. Um, uh, Fifty Shades was, of Grey, maybe. That'd be kind of impossible. Funny. Yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey. That'd be kind of goofy. Maybe. <laughs> that would be something. Do you trust me? You just stand to be a full rope set. It's just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, Terminator was pretty funny. Imagine that. Little, that uh, would be good. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess that, that's a bad question for me because, like, I'm just so bad with movies. I'm, like, embarrassingly bad with movies. What's one of your favorite movies or movies you've seen recently? Oh, um, I can't say recently because, again, I just I just don't watch them often. But, uh, dude, my cousin Vinny, man. Holy shit. Oh, Joe Pesci. We'll change that to Dan DeVito. <laughs> close, close enough. Yeah. Close enough. It just kind of works as yeah, my really. Vinny. <laughs> could have been passed it out of the way. It would have been just as effective. Um, but uh, fucking hell. Um, yeah, this is such a bad, such a bad question for me. Chris, he's our guest. Why would you give him a bad question? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Denny's or IHOP. <laughs> there you go. That's always a good one. I'm just Den- uncultured swine. <laughs> honestly it's just probably better off as someone that was super into mo- it's still into movies yeah man it's really hindered my professional life so just stay away angel stay away stay, stay away, away from, from the movies good because if i spread myself any more thin than i am right now ain't nothing getting done <laughs> <laughs> although yeah. i will say one thing that's slightly on topic but mostly off topic um i used to always rag on adults who were into anime because i just thought like I guess it's just inherently in how they're drawn. They're so cutesy with the big fucking eyes. I just thought it was like kidsy yep. fucking bullshit, bro. I they get brutal. Allow me to eat my this plate of my words because <laughs> I went from um, so my uh, my gateway drug into anime was Castlevania on Netflix, which was fucking oh, yeah. gorgeous, beautiful, fucking beautifully <laughs> illustrated, beautifully done. Then it went to this anime called Parasite, which blew me the fuck away. Like, the amount of philo- uh, philosophical approach that they put into that is just, it's very Eastern, and I'm, I'm a Buddhist, so I really related to that, which was just spellbindingly yeah. beautiful. Then it went from Parasite to Death Note, which just like, that fucked me up. <laughs> that fucked me up. Just today, a couple hours ago, I just finished Attack on Titan. Oh, oh wow, people love that. Up. <sighs> I was like, please don't say uh, One Piece. 
No, what? say One Piece. Say One Piece. <laughs> one no, Piece. I, Jesse's obsessed with I it. Just went, yeah. I just got into oh it stupidly. He can't stop watching about it. That's 900 all he talks episodes, about. so it's... Say, oh. I'll, say, I'll say hello to you next year, dude. <laughs> you know what, thank, you, thank you for saying that because um, originally uh, there's some of these items that have like fucking like 60 episodes a season. Bitch, I ain't got time for that. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know? it's dreadful. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, awesome, but when you're going through it, I'm like, dude, I, I see a clip of One Piece. I just popped up on my YouTube and I was I don't care about spoilers because, you right. know, it's not. And I was like, that's a cool scene. I was like, what episode is that? It's like, that's eh, 750. I was like, oh. <laughs> I guess I'll forget about it by then. I was like, oh. Would you yeah, say you're on 90? I'm the same way with the spoilers, man, because, like, I have to know that it's going to get good. So I know where I'm <laughs> investing my time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, well, like, Attack on Titan, you just finished it, you said, right? I literally just finished it. Like, the first years. episode. How invested do you get immediately? Um, oh, you know what it was? When the late, when the, when the mom dies? It happened so fast. <sighs> like, Meaning my binge of episode one to the last one happened so quick. It's like a fucking blur. I don't <laughs> remember. I feel like I would just like artistically and illustrator raped. Like I just didn't remember anything. I just remember having Jeez. a good time. Came out of you all at once. Break the willing. Um, but, um, but dude, it was just, it was just beautiful. And apparently, I guess at some point I was probably high out of my mind. I like started an episode at some point and I was like, who the hell is watching this? And I was like, look at <laughs> Because that's what was happening. I was just like, I feel like I've been here before. <laughs> and bitch, I was. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. God, that was a nice, like, bout of laughter. Like, five in the morning, me laughing <laughs> my ass off in my room by myself. A night <laughs> owl right there. Oh, my God. But, yeah, Attack on Titan was just really good. New season, October. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I got every, it's not this over? Is, no, it's going to be over. Oh but I had when I helped my brother move like a couple years ago, Attack on Titan just came out, uh, and like I watched it like the the last day and the last night. I watched it on his couch like as we were moving, yeah. and I literally went back to my house. I like I never read manga, but when an anime is so good, I'm like the story continue. I'm like I'm reading the fucking manga, and then I'll give it a break for like months. And I, dude, it's just that story so awesome. Like <laughs> it's yeah. it gets so insane. It gets to a place where you never really conceive that it would go to, you know, and. It, again, there's just like, you know, when, when it comes to like Eastern philosophy, and I guess that their approach for a lot of things, it's just a matter of putting thought into everything. You know, for me, the artists that I respect the most, is the reason why I do concept records, because when I see an artist like, you know, whether it's Trent Reznor or Bjork or like any, anyone who's, who just puts thought into what they do and it shows either visually, artistically, lyrically, musically, whatever, um, it just, it just, it shows to me that they have so much, they put so much stock and value into what they're doing that it results in with just the amount of effort and time and how creative they're at, you know, oh, yeah. they are with what they do as opposed to just like, you know, da, 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 you know, like <laughs> song one done next one. Up. You know? <laughs> I mean, but, but that's the thing, you know, and, and it, but it really depends on like, if you're a visual person, you know, like a lot of, in my, a lot, um, in a lot of my consultations, like, they come to me because they just have no idea for videos. They don't know what to wear in photo shoots. They don't know what to, they don't have that, you know? And that that's, doesn't mean that you're better or worse. It just means that there's something that you lack that someone who's good at will help you with, you know? Yeah. And that's the, and, and those are the roles. And if you, if you decide to get better at it, great. There's ways to like really harness that type of craft. And, um, you know, by surrounding yourself with people who, who, you know, are in that realm or getting advice or watching lectures. I mean, you can learn anything on YouTube. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's the one thing. So when I got into anime, like I was like, you know, the, the visual, uh, um, delivery of how like they're drawn and stuff like that really skewed my respect for it. Cause I thought, again, it was funny, oh, yeah. you know, and I, I could not have been more wrong. And to anyone I've offended in the anime world, I'm so sorry. I love it. It's fine. We're friends now. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. It's, oh, yeah. I, uh, I grew up just watching cartoon, you know, like cartoons and Dragon then moved Ball to like Z. some animes and stuff. Yeah. But when you do get to like, you know, I never really, I'm not like, I'm, I like anime, but I never like, I'm not like the anime guy. It's like, dude, yeah. you know, this, this. But when you get into some of the, like Attack on Titan was the first one where just like, people are just getting murdered like it's just like it's yeah. t- that some very deep like heavy stuff gets hit it's like 
It's like, what the hell? Like, cause you're not, you just like, you see it once in a while in anime, but a lot of times it's like, Hey, we're having fun. We're a gang. Everyone's trying to be friends. And yeah. then like the bad guy comes and ruins like 10 episodes and then we're pretty good again. So it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's like, wow, dude, yeah. life kind of sucks in this whole series. Like just, there's it's like, okay, this is brutal. It's, yeah, it's super rough, man. It really tugs at your heartstrings. I mean, like, I think Parasite probably did that a little bit more because it was just like, that was deep, deep oh, yeah. philosophy, man. Like if you, if you haven't seen that, I really recommend it. Um, it just, it just went into some shit. I was like, damn, dude. Yeah. But again, that's that, that I respect people who go above and beyond, you know, it's just, it's not just about the illustration. It's not just about the story. It's, it's everything. It's like the full package, you know, it's, um, you know, and, and it's like, and, and for me, it's also like the people that I have in my life, I know that we're short of time, but like the people that I have in my life um, are people who constantly work on all the aspects of themselves that make them greater, you know, at oh. what they do, you know, and, um, and it helps to inspire me just very much like I was saying, surrounding yourself with people who you feel are yeah. help to influence and inspire you, man. Like, you know, the people you surround yourself with, it's like, it's, it, it's critical, man. It's, it's important. You will pick up their habits. You will pick up some of their things that they're, that they're doing. And, um, it, it's again, that friendly competition, you do a little bit better. So it makes them want to do better. Make you want to do better. You know, it's just like, and you're, and before you guys know it, eight years goes by and you, and you're like on top of the world together, you know, and that's such a beautiful thing to, you know, really experience and to share with someone that you grew up with. Oh yeah. Of course. It's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it's it's also crazy. Just even if their habits, just their energy. God forbid yeah. you adopt the energy of someone that's just like they're cool, like ten percent of the time, but ninety percent of the time it's like, man, that's like poison. That's like McDonald's for your soul. It's just yeah. like it's just like time <laughs> for your body. Just like, hey, do you're really fun to hang out with? Why am I sad all the time? I don't. This is yeah, crazy. Dude. <laughs> Fucking a man. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're uh, we're closing down on time again. <laughs> the yeah. ticking down. Um, and before we let you go, is there anything we missed that you would like to mention to your fans? Tell them uh, something to look forward to or anything like that. No, I man. Just just do what I, what I say every single time. And I, you know, really thank you all for your attention and your time and hanging out with us. I don't take any of it for granted. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Awesome. And it's a pleasure talking to you. It was a great time. And oh, sorry dude. we had to make you keep joining in. <laughs> yes. oh, good, Next time we will buy it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it will be, we'll be prepared. I will literally go on. I'll go on welfare if I need to buy, like, just to afford it next time. I'm never. It's awful. Like, it's not, let's start to go funny for you. You'll be, you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Jesse really needs Zoom Premium, please, and food. Apparently, it really didn't go well for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's so much of a better person, though. But no, seriously, I really appreciate you guys having me on. You know, and taking the time to you know shoot the shit. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Awesome. So I appreciate and it. Like, what's the best place for someone to find uh, anything? All your stuff. Your website. Oh man. I'm as easy as pie. Angelavaldi.com. Or you just Google me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nice little plug right there. I'm easy plus TV. I'm everywhere. You know? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> dude. That's awesome. Hey, dude. Thank you so much, Angel, yeah. man. Anytime you got something to announce, always come back. Yeah, always welcome back. I will certainly do that. <laughs> thank you. Sick. Have, Have a great night. night. Enjoy. You guys too, man. Take care. And welcome back to the Metal Teddy Bear Experience podcast right now. This is your host, Chris. You got <laughs> Jesse right there. I That's actually it. matched it pretty good. Yeah. I was like, wow. Uh, <laughs> I was looking over and I was like, I'm not going to crack under this pressure right now. I'm back. All right. Yeah. Welcome back to the Mel Teddy Fix Podcast. <laughs> Other than Jesse, I hope you guys enjoyed Angel Vivaldi. That was an awesome interview. Yeah. He was great. It was so awesome to talk to that guy. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, dude, uh, like I'm not into a lot of instrumental music or like guitar shreddy stuff. Like I like it when I hear kidding? it. You like everything. Shut up. What are you? You can literally so actually no, you can't show Jesse anything. He won't like it. But Jesse will just like listen to anything online by himself and he'll love it. But oh, if I you show him time. something like you're like, dude, check out Angel Vivaldi's new song. He's like, no, it sucks, bro. Him, Derivative. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Damn. Like I saw him on some YouTube shred compilations and stuff. And I went and saw his music. And like I, I said in the interview, serotonin, just that hook, the video, everything about that guy. That's a pretty good jump off point for that guy. You get to see everything he's about video shot. Well done. Everyone in the video looks good. Dancing. Did you react to it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, I, <laughs> I think so. Know what I it, it was anymore. the night I got Twitch uh, affiliate. And I think I was, uh, I was okay. slightly drunk and I was just like, I'm going to watch this shit. You drunk? No way. 
That like never happens. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's amazing. And it's just like, like I said, like, you, you know me, I get obsessed with music. So if I'm not listening, I might forget about an album I love just because I'm so into the album I'm into right now where I always remember that guy because that guy, you know, and he lived up to it. Dude. The guy was so fun to talk to. He had so much interesting things to say. And not only and, that, he actually yeah. like had fun talking to us where he kept coming back and um, he stayed the whole time. So oh, yeah. Because usually people like got to go. Professionals. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, um, oh, thank you, Angel, for staying that long. It was a huge uh, pleasure. And guys, like he said, he has a Patreon now too. So check that out. Um, he does a bunch of stuff there. He actually talked about that EP, which I'm really excited to hear. I want to know who that drummer is. He said it's a very well-known drummer. It's going to be fun to hear. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's also going to be fun to hear because it's always interesting to uh, hear usually instrumental pe- people who make instrumental music with vocals. Like I think uh, uh, the guys from Animals as Leaders were in a band called Tram, T-R-A-M. And uh, they had a vocalist, I think, on one of the tracks. And it was just kind of interesting to hear like dudes and Animals as Leaders and like all these instrumentalists like have vocals over something. It's like, oh, okay, that's interesting because you just never think about it. Yeah, but he is right. Like the like the reason he's so good is he the way he writes his songs are just so much different than, you know. We're not going to name names, but we he have seen shred all the time too. That's yeah. the thing. Like yeah, a lot of shredders, like they just shred the whole song. Yeah, he actually makes a song. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes the, the the riff is somewhat. It's not like a classic riff. Like I heard one guy it's like, dude, they play like video game music. Like it's like what? Did, it's like, dude. Fuck you, that riff is still awesome. Like Fuck that you, main yeah. riff of Sarah. Just like, dude, what the fuck? Like it just makes you want to dance. You're popping around your seat. You're just bobbing your head. You're having a great time. And uh yeah, dude. It's just sometimes, man, like we've seen shredders live, we've seen instrumentalists live, and it's fun, but sometimes there's a good riff that gets trampled because of a solo that's awesome, but doesn't really fit it, maybe. <laughs> it's not always yeah. fun to hear and like that guy i have i've listened to a bunch of his music haven't heard it sent like him trample over his own music which is cool because you know it's a different spacing for instrumental music than it is for actually you know he kind of said he treated the spacing the same as actually having a vocalist because he treats the lead guitar as a vocal which it yeah. basically is he said that since he's a guy and the vocalist <laughs> yeah <laughs> My which is actually pretty so true it doesn't so make that, sense. that actually might be the philosophy that led to him actually making good instrumental songs because sometimes Man, if you think instrumental is just about how to wow the shit out of someone nonstop, it's like, yeah, that's cool, but you get exhausted. Like, sometimes when you hear people really good at something, it's fucking exhausting. Like, I'm not always prepared, but, like, there's some progressive bands, again, not going to name names. I love it, but, man, when I'm in the right mood, I'm just getting – you're getting hit over the head with, like, dude, listen to this lick. Listen to this time signature change. Listen to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, just like, yeah, like oh yeah. my god especially if you're not someone who can grasp that stuff easily sometimes it just goes right over you and you're like what's oh, going yeah. on i don't think you need to be a musician to like angel vivaldi's music i think i could show serotonin oh, yeah. or that whole album actually any of his stuff and you could just be because my one friend always gets mad he's like why aren't these enter amazing musician uh famous why is fucking imagine dragons everyone likes to attack imagine dragons for some reason but whatever yeah and he's like Easy. all this pop bullshit i'm just like yeah, because some people, their interest isn't music. Sometimes music is the space filler in the background so they can do other shit. Music, is, like me and you, we look forward to the new album. You know, the Lamb of God just announced their fucking uh, live show, uh, stream show, where they're playing two full two albums. Oh, my God. i so happy. I was literally in my bed in the dark reading that in my underwear, and I could not have been. That was the best part of my day until I talked to Angel. Yeah, they're playing like, Lamb of God self-titled album that just came out, and they're playing Ashes of the Wake, 16 years old. Dude, How I literally just said that last night. I was doing some reactions last night. I was finished up at 3 in the morning reading that Mark Morton article from Revolver and getting angry at all oh, the man. songs he said that he never, they never played live, and now they're fucking going to do it. But yeah, like that. Some people could give a shit. I know people who don't care about music, and it's like, oh, you know you're f- that band that made that song you like? They're doing this. Cool. I like that one song. Like that's I also it. it's find like, it weird with people who don't want to see the band in certain venues. We have a friend like that too. It's like <laughs> well, I won't yeah. go. Like ah, I, I don't know. I'm not going. Yeah, I I don't know what that is because I have had venues like that have taken its toll on a show. Like maybe like maybe my fucking but the band ain't. still makes it worth it in my opinion. Yeah, it is true. Like obviously I've never done that because I like to see the band without a doubt. And obviously if you get close enough to the stage. 
you won't notice the venue. So if like the bar sucks and stuff, yeah, and you sit at the bar, like that blows. I will say like Starland, I love, but the old Starland back in the day, actually still is the same setup. Starland yeah, is say. very annoying when it's sold out. If you're if you pick the wrong spot, I think they oversell. Sold out, to be honest, yeah, because like behind, by the pizza stations and stuff, like I've been like slammed into those because there was no room. Like when I saw Kill Switch, the off date for Mayhem 2008, job for a cowboy. A white chapel job for cowboy kill switch. Oh no. Hello? Yeah, your light died. Fuck. You can't hear me now? I'm back. Wow, my whole computer just freaked out. Oh, All right, it looked we're like back. you just lost, lost light. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Well, so, we can wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, literally, I got the whole time. I love kill switch. I took a break because I was a wee kid. I got exhausted during kill switch. Relax. I went to I went to get a water and literally I'm just getting smashed against the fucking thing because there was no room. The whole crowd was just this the whole time. <laughs> and like literally it's just like learning not to put yourself there but if you go there you might think starlight fucking sucks <laughs> like it's just like all you do is oh no did it do it again no you're good all right cool well my, my screen froze so yeah we should probably oh, we're <laughs> back all right yeah we should definitely wrap it up because it looks like our computer's yeah, about to... having technical oh my god it's falling apart all end right. the podcast <laughs> <laughs> all right guys Bye. thank you for listening as always and get ready for next week we have uh, another special band on so Get ready for that. Until next time, keep it real.